So recently I uploaded a video on one of my projects where I procedurally generate progressive metal music and many of you wanted an explanation on how it's done. If you haven't seen it yet, here's a quick sneak peek on how that sounds. And if you want to watch the full thing, you can click in the upper right corner right now to go to that video and then come back here to get the full explanation of how it's done. Also, real quick before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that all of the songs are available now on my Bandcamp at Name Your Price. And I also uploaded additional songs on Spotify and every other platform you can think of. I'll put links in the description for that. So, to start, my way of doing things is by no means the only way to achieve it. I know many people are making incredible things with machine learning and AI generated music, but I took a slightly different approach. There's no machine learning or AI involved in my program, rather it's a more manual process. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the implementation, I want to briefly talk about the history of my program. The idea for this program basically started off as a joke. I had an idea of a program that would just randomize rhythms played on an open string forever. I hacked together a small program in Unreal Engine 4 over a weekend when I should have been studying that just played open strings over and over again. Let's actually have a look at that first version real quick, because I still have a build of that on one of my hard drives. It's really primitive, but it's still a bit of fun, so let's listen to it. I showed this version to a couple of my friends and they thought it was really funny and I kinda knew that I wanted to expand on it. But the implementation of that first version wasn't really good, so I gave up on that rather quickly. Fast forward a couple of years and I had started writing my own game engine for unrelated purposes. I was reminded of that first version and I had the idea of trying to re-implement it in my own game engine, so I started to work on that version. It had lots of problems with latency and not keeping up with, for example, fast blast beat sections. The sound engine was implemented using FMOD, and while it worked great for 99% of the stuff that I wanted to do in my game engine, it wasn't quite enough for this project. So the project was put on ice again. Fast forward some months more, and I finally found the motivation to tear my whole sound engine implementation apart and rebuild it from scratch. This time I wrote the sound engine by myself, bypassing any third party libraries with low latency in mind. A couple of weeks later, it was in a state where I could re-implement that second version, and it worked. Even with the fast blast beat sections, latency was acceptable. This was kind of the turning point for the project, as now I had a solid framework to build it on. Full with motivation and inspiration, I knew I wanted to get some guitar melodies in, but all I had sampled up to that point was just open strings. So I sat down and over the course of a couple of weeks I sampled every note on my guitar, multiple times to add variations, edited those samples and exported them as separate sound files, and loaded it up in my program, and started implementing the first lead melody. It was very primitive, but it was an early look of what it could become. As I started to implement more rhythms and more melodies, this project had evolved from me just wanting to do something funny to a new way of songwriting for me. And that is currently how I view this project. Its purpose isn't necessarily to generate music out of thin air, but rather a tool for me to input ideas and have it spit back hundreds or thousands of variations and combinations. It allows me to input bits and pieces of riffs I have in my head and have the program transform it into something coherent. I wanted to get that out of the way because the purpose of the program very much informs the implementation. Speaking of, let's dig into the actual implementation. Quick disclaimer, I will show you some of the code of the program, but don't worry, you don't have to know C++ to understand any of this. The code is mostly a backdrop for this discussion. This could probably be implemented in any programming language. The program can essentially be broken down into two of the major components. The generation system and the playback system. 
the generation system is responsible for actually generating the songs while the playback system is responsible for playing all the different samples that makes up the song. At the top level, what the generation system produces is a single song. This structure is really simple. It contains the song number as well as its name. It also has the beats per minute as well as how long the song is. And then we just have a list of sections. This is what the playback system receives from the generation system whenever a new song needs to be generated. Delving deeper, let's look at the structure of a section. A section is also essentially just a collection of so-called section events, along with some additional useful information, such as the total time of the section, the names of the section generators involved in generating the section, and it also keeps track of which ambient and effects layers have been applied to this section. That last part is just to ensure that an ambient or effects layer doesn't get applied twice and that no more than the maximum amount of either ambient or effects layers gets applied. Delving even deeper, let's look at what a section event is. This is essentially just instructions on when and how to play a specific sound. Right now there are around 3600 different sound files that gets loaded in every time I start the program. And the generation system together with the playback system ensures that these gets pieced together and played back in a coherent manner. So that's what the generation system hands off to the playback system. But you might wonder how the generation system fills in these structures with something resembling actual music. Well, let's delve into that. So whenever a request comes in to generate a new song, a few things happens beforehand. First of all, it randomizes a couple of song parameters that guides the generation. For example, it randomizes the BPM, it randomizes how many ambient and effects layers there should be in the song. It randomizes the intensity of the song, which for example increases or decreases the chance of a blast beat being generated, and some other parameters. Next, it generates the song number and gives the song a random name. It also randomizes the length of the song. This length is only preliminary, as the actual length of the generated sections determines the final length of the song. Next, there is a chance that an intro and or outro sections will be generated. Next, we get into the meat of the generation system. Now I have to talk about the idea of a so-called section generator. Currently, there are around hundreds of these in the program. A section generator is essentially the logic and the rules for one concept or one idea, defining the core of that idea as well as the logic and rules for how to generate variations on and combinations with that idea. It sounds a bit vague, but that's because each section generator needs the freedom to make its own decisions on how to generate whatever it's currently generating. So for example, instead of trying to write one singular system that would generate all kinds of lead melodies, I have broken it down into more manageable parts, where one section generator generates one specific type of thing and defines the logic and rules and the framework for generating that specific type of thing. There are different types of section generators, so let's start with the most fundamental. The rhythm section generator. These are responsible for creating the framework for each section, and mostly generates the drums, bass and rhythm guitars. These rhythm section generators will often call back to the generation system to request stuff like leads, ambiences or effects to be layered on top of the section. To give an example, let's look at one of the rhythm section generators and see how it constructs its section. I have a fairly useful utility that I use here that helps with creating polyrhythms out of riffs. 
So imagine that you have a riff that you have written. Then you chop that riff up in different parts and then shuffle them around to create a new riff. In this rhythm section generator I do just that. All of the different notes in each part is also randomized within the current scale. There's also lead section generators which provide leads that are layered on top that are created in a similar fashion, as well as ambience, effects, intro and outro section generators. It's hard to talk about the algorithm of this project because it's not one singular algorithm, but rather a lot of small ones that all contribute to the whole. And going through them all would simply just take so much time. <laughs> While each section generator provides a decent amount of variation on its own, much of the variation comes from how it combines with the other section generators. Each section generator is handcrafted to produce a single type of thing and to be able to be layered together with other section generators. If you want more examples on different section generators and how they work, then let me know in the comments and I can make more videos like this. But let's get back to the generation system. So, a song is about to get generated. What it first does is determine if there should be an intro. If that test passes, then an intro section generator is called upon to fill in that section. Then we keep adding sections with rhythm section generators that, again, can call back to the generation system to add leads, ambiences or effects until we have reached the length of the song that we set out to generate. We also randomize if there's going to be an outro as well. And if so, we find a suitable outro section generator to fill that last section in. But how are section generators chosen? Every time a section needs to be filled in, a list of candidates gets pieced together. For example, if we want to generate an intro, we would go through each intro section generator and check if it's suitable. Every section generator has functionality for intentionally excluding themselves from this process, based on if they think they are suitable for the song being generated or not, depending on the song parameters. Every section generator also defines its own weight, that is, when the list of candidates has been assembled, how likely is this section generator to be chosen? And then, when all of the sections of the song has been generated, the song is ready to ship off to the playback system. So, what's next for this project? Well, I have just started basically tearing everything down, starting over almost from scratch. The playback system will stay mostly as is, but the generation system needs a complete overhaul. I think the current implementation is fine, but I know it can be improved. To start, I would like to have a better implementation for defining song structures. Right now it's kinda just random. So the idea is that I would have a list of predefined song structures that it picks from randomly at the start of each song. Then it determines beforehand which section generator should fill each slot. So which section generator would be responsible for the intro, the verse, the chorus, etc. And also enable the section generators to make their own decisions based on which part of the song it's generating. I would also like to play around more with different scales and tunings, but the current section generators that are implemented right now are not prepared for that. So instead of spending weeks reconfiguring all of them to work with these new systems that I have in mind, I would rather spend a little more time implementing new section generators with those systems in mind and have something completely new and fresh in the end. And also, of course, I would like to evolve my algorithms to require less input from me and be able to generate things more freeform to add more variation. And also, of course, continuing to work on the humanization. I'm also planning on sharing more of the development of the project on this channel, so stay tuned for that. And well, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. See you in the next video.